Daniel De La Torre, welcome also to the JMB Beach. They will uh, tell us the secret to how to sell a business case to, to the business. So, all over to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you all hear me well? Yeah. Um, so, welcome to our uh, talk today. Um, before we start, I'm just wondering how many of you guys consider yourself to be more business focused in your work? I see a few. And how many consider themselves to be more tech focused? Yeah. And out of these tech guys, um, primarily guys in this case, how often have you been in a situation that you were really wanting to work on a project and maybe your mon manager or your budget owner was like, nah, we don't really see the added value, go do something else? Yeah. <laughs> so today's pitch is sort of intended to hopefully give you the tools to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Because um, what we see happening is that often tech people or developers, they like to really work on something, but they forget to, to tell the, the business owners why it is important what we're doing. Um, so like we're saying, so you can get the budget to keep doing what you do best. But before we get into that, my name is Elina Brandt. I work for Oracle as a pre-sales consultant in Amsterdam. Hi, my name is uh, Javier. I have been working in Oracle for uh, more than five years. I have been working as a consultant for EMEA, delivering uh, POCs, uh, demos, designing architectures with the customers. So I came from the dark side of the <laughs> technical side. Okay, for the big data. All right. Um, so as said today, we will first look at understanding the business problem of uh, your business or your budget owner, uh, knowing your ecosystem, then Javier will tell more about how to build your architecture on big data, and then we want to show you how you can show the value to your business owner, uh, and then we have time for questions. All right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to underline our presentation with a use case. And in this case, we uh, are using a, pr a use case from a university that we worked on. And this university had a lot of problems, primarily uh, a lack of student satisfaction and th with that progression in what they were studying. Because of this, they had difficulty retaining students. So usually students stay the whole three, four years, no matter how long it is. And at this university, they just weren't because they were unhappy. Um, as in most universities and in most companies, research was done, but they weren't really talking with each other. Maybe it sounds familiar to you. Everyone does their own research, but there's nothing conclusive. The same with this university. And the data, as a result, was everywhere. So their technology department came to us, and they asked, they said, OK, help us. So obviously, we looked at the different approaches that we have. So obviously, the business, in the end, what they wanted is to be able to improve the curriculum, but they needed to understand based on what and they wanted to understand the, the student needs in order to increase the student retention. And as you can see here, the tech obviously underlines the business always. I think nowadays businesses do not work anymore without tech, even though businesses seem to think otherwise, but it is the, the truth and I think you guys all know that. So the tech was really looking for a tool to understand what's going on, but they were also looking for a tool in order to use all the, the data that was scattered around all the, data, uh, the silos. So we gave them yeah. a tool. Yeah. So always big data is the, is the tool for everything. So you go to internet and we search for big data. And big data is going to solve all the problems in the world that we have. <laughs> so big data is going to cure cancer. Big data is going to improve my business. Uh, also, for sure, you're using big data to start waiting for the final of the Champions League uh, this Saturday, or for the <laughs> World Cup, because big data is able to do everything, OK? So I can imagine that you are already are using it, and you park your boat here in, the, in Malaga. This is how you, you came. <laughs> Isn't true? Because big data is the solution for everything. No? <laughs> and this is the, the, the real problem no, that we have, that the big data is like a boost word that we don't know how it is, how it works, but it's going to solve all my problems that I have in my company. No? So when we go from a, a business point of view, so when we saw all this marketing slide that big data is the great tool, so basically it's what these are the business expectations no? from our managers and from the business point of view. 
this report even could be cash flow. Like uh, we are earning a lot of money because we're using big data and the competition is not using it. No? <laughs> so this is the, the great solution. We need to have big data. I don't know what it is, but we should have it. No? So this is re the reality. Now, when we go to a technical point of view, we say that this is the current solution. So it is great that there is a huge community in the, in the open source building a lot of different tools, but sometimes could be a bit chaotic because the, the community is pushing too hard into the big data technologies. So there are so many great tools to use that sometimes it's difficult to see which one is better to use. Or maybe you decide to use one, and then after one, two years, the, the community decides to go into another path. So what do you do with your production environment? You should recode it, you should start again, you should have a legacy system that you are not going to have the support of the community because it's very old. So this is the, the, the trade-off, and this is why we have this kind of mess in the, in the, in the big data solution. Okay? So uh, this is a, a, a survey that the Capgemini did in 2015, saying that only 27% of the uh, people who did the survey considered that the big data uh, solution was successful. So a lot of people fail doing big data. Okay? Also more recently, because uh, this is a, like a very old uh, survey, uh, I was looking for something from someone from Garner, which is uh, Nick, saying that they were very conservative. So right now, there is a, a failure close to the 85% of the people failing with big data. Okay? So this is the, our goal of today, to explain how we can build a big data, how we can help the business without making magic from IT and also from a business point of view. Okay? So knowing this, what could be, what are the typical problems that we found when we go into a big data solution? So the first thing, going back to the use case of the university, so we see that we have a lot of data in different silos. So we can have our MongoDB because it's great for a web web page. We have our Oracle database for our CRM or for keeping all the students, which is great. Then we have uh, all the departments uh, which all the developers are doing great tools. But at the end, you have a, a, a lot, of, lot of data sources where at the end you don't have a unique uh, source of truth. Okay? So it's very difficult to, to consolidate, to have an uh, insight of what is going on in your company, or in this case, it was the university. No? So this is the first problem that we found when we go into a, a big data to see what is going on in the company. So simple. Then we go into the, uh, the data could be locking. So could be a lot of legacy applications that is very difficult to move away, how we're going to, to handle that, no? because maybe uh, still I found many customers using Cobol, okay? Is, uh, I'm, I'm surprised about how many people are still using it. Then, also, uh, even considering how we are going to manage all the data and so on, there is still a lack of big data uh, skills. Okay? As I, tell, uh, I told, there are so many new technologies coming every day, every year. It is very difficult to see what I'm going to use, what, uh, if there is a bug, or when they're going to solve it. Uh, I have another colleague which prefers to use another technology. It's a, a bit of sometimes of a, of a problem, okay? And also, if there's a big team, okay, I have seen many reports lately saying that the, the, the sexiest job was the data scientist job, but in the other hand, data scientists are leaving the companies, okay? Because they were thinking like, oh, I'm going to solve my company's problem, I'm going to use data science, I'm going to consolidate everything, and I'm going to start improving the business. But they found with all these kind of problems that make very difficult their job. It's not so sexy. It's more about ETL, okay? And they found many, many problems, okay? So what could be the solution? So we think that the best solution for a company which is a starting is to use the cloud, okay? First of all, because we can have a, a unified uh, data lake, so we have a place where we can start consolidating all the information. Okay, I will take my information from my Mongo, I will start moving my information from uh, my Oracle database, I will start moving my files, my Excel, so I have everything consolidated. If at the end doesn't make sense, I don't get any value, I can drop it away. My, because it's cloud and I pay for whatever I use. So this is one of the benefits of moving uh, big data into the cloud. Then, for the data uh, uh, locking, 
It's true that we are seeing a lot of uh, open source tools or Oracle tools or many companies' tools. They are, they are building great tools to move data into the, into the cloud. No? For example, how you hear about Kafka, maybe? Yeah, so Kafka is a great tool to moving data in real time. So we see it uh, uh, a lot. For example, we have, for example, a mainframe legacy. I see it for many customers that they start moving the data. So they don't touch the legacy applications, but they are consolidating all the information in the data lake. Okay? So this is a way of handling the data locking, no? to consolidate using the different tools to move data in. The good thing about the cloud is that the, they're going to provide everything for us. No? For example, talking in the, in the case of Oracle, what they give us is a, in a very easy wizard, nest, 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 create a big data cluster. So I only upload my data, and I move my algorithms there directly. So you can use R, you can use... Uh, uh, any kind of analytic tool that you want to use, okay? So you are free to start working directly with your algorithms there since the minute one, okay? Also, they will think about the, the cloud or all the integrations because nowadays it's very popular to have a multi-cloud solution. So you can be using Oracle, Amazon, Microsoft, is to have a unified platform for all the users. So the idea is to have users which are able to access the um, big data cluster, and also they have the privilege to move, for example, to, to read some tables from the Oracle database, or is able to control everything. No? So from a, a governance point of view, they are able to control what they're doing and, and how. Okay? So this is very, very important for security, because also because of the lack of skills in, in big data, they don't know how, how to secure a big data cluster. Because you need authentication, you need author authorization, maybe interaction with uh, uh, the LDAP that you can have your own company. So it's, it's very difficult, and the cloud is providing all these tools for, for today. But uh, uh, surprisingly, the first uh, problem that we found in big data is the lack of a business case. As I told you at the beginning, it's great, uh, big data is going to cure cancer, big data is going to improve my business, I'm going to be rich, okay? I want to be like. Uh, Bill Gates or Larry Ellison, okay? I want to be rich, but I don't know what to do with all my big data is here. Why, why, what should I do with my big data? No? So that's why Elina is going to explain the value of uh, having a business case in order to implement a big data solution. All right. Um, so when we look at pitching a business case, uh, we consider three p uh, pillars. So the first pillar is tell the story. The second pillar is knowing and the third pillar is the purpose of your business case. So when we look at telling the story, we usually, uh, it comes from the idea that you should not assume that your receiving end, so often the business users, can draw the same conclusions as you do. So we, you really have to spell out for them by saying, for example, in the, uh, the first one, through the proper use of data analysis, you will be able to gain insights into possible reasons why students or which students are struggling. Because if we just tell them, oh, use big data, maybe someone has read something that big data is the solution to everything, but we need to tell them which problem we are gonna solve for them. So they understand that what, where they're hurting, where their pain is at, is where we're gonna solve it. And you should almost frame it in a way that without you and without the work that you do, they will, they will not survive. They will, the problems will stay huge. So, um, first, you identify the problem you will solve. You spell out the business needs. So, for example, the, the university said, okay, we want to update our policies, update the curriculum. So then you say, with these insights, you will be able to fine-tune the policies focused on student retention and progression. So as mentioned earlier, they had issues with student progression and retention. And last, and very, very, very important, and often forgot, forgotten, make sure that it's quantifiable and measurable. Something business or budget owners love is being able to say after like three months, six months, one year, okay, it worked or it didn't work. So if you tell them beforehand, okay, and we can help you increase the student retention by 10% within a year, after one year, if it turns out to be 25%, they can be like, oh my God, this is amazing, we have to keep doing this. So those are three points in when you're telling the story to really keep in mind. So draw the conclusions for them. Never, ever, ever assume that they can do it themselves. Probably they're all very intelligent people, but nonetheless, be sure. Um, so as Javi said, um, big data obviously is done, uh, is quite complicated. 
So when we look at knowing, um, there's four aspects in that. So first we'll look at what they know, because maybe they have a background in IT, or maybe they don't have it all. So when we come in and say, oh, big data, and they have no idea what big data is, because they have no IT background, it's quite difficult to convince them. Um, and if they have experience, obviously it's a lot easier. So in the case with their university, they had no experience at all in big data. So Javi went in and um, showed them the architecture of the big data tool from, from complete scratch. And Javi's gonna show it to you now as well. Yeah. So. Let's make data science sexy again. Okay. <laughs> so when we talk about the uh, big data or any solution in the, our company, it's very important to have an architecture or a plan. How do we plan to reach the solution? How to solve the business problem, okay? But without disrupting, disrupting the solution that currently we have, okay? So here we have a conceptual architecture about how to build a big data uh, solution. I will explain step by step how, be, how to build a big data solution from, from scratch. But I want to give you the, the whole overview of uh, how we're going to, to build it, okay? Because I found many customers that they think that uh, big data is going to uh, replace the Oracle database or the relational database. And uh, this is not true. So the, the solutions, they complement each other. No? So we found, for example, in big data that we don't have, for example, foreign keys. So you lose the relationship of the table. So there are many things in when you realize that the, the, they're not going to replace, but they could uh, help each other to have a, like a unified data lake, to have a, a, a great uh, business value for, for, for your company, okay? So going from the, from, from the database, what we're going to do is to have a, a data lake, as a, which could be gonna be a big data solution. And on top of that, we need what we call a discovery lab. So it's a place where we can run analytics, where we can view what is going in the database, what is going in the big data, try algorithms, visualize it, run code, and play, no? This is what is a discovery lab, okay? And also it's very important, uh, as a big data normally is a very uh, slow, let's say, layer, we need a, a, a real-time engine, a stream engine, to collect all the data in, in real time into our big data, okay? So moving it more into uh, physical products or more to something that we can understand, so for a streaming engine, so today is very popular Kafka, so more, most of you are already aware, okay? And we can use uh, our big data solution into the, the, the object store, okay? So this is the, the good thing about using the, the cloud is that we're going to uh, split what is the CPU power from the storage. So you don't need to have monolithic servers that depending on which com big data components are gonna be popular, you are going to need to buy more hardware or not, okay? So this is the benefits of using the, of using the cloud. And you can use a cheaper storage as the object store, or you can go to more powerful storage in case that you need it, okay? And uh, of course, you can use any kind of open source like a Jupyter, Zeppelin, maybe you have heard about that before? Yes, no? To analyze our own code, yeah? So the majority know, okay? Cool. So how are we going to build this architecture from scratch? Okay, so normally in most of the companies we have a reporting team which is accessing the data warehouse, the database to run analytics. Okay, this is very common. And nowadays it's very uh, trendy to collect data from uh, um, op open data, no? social networks, uh, and so on. I want to know more about my customers. Okay, I want to know more what is going on is uh, in the other departments, for example, in the use case of the university, no? I want to consolidate all the information from the different departments. What the hell is going on here, okay? So normally, we have a lot of data. I think it's not showing the, the animation is not going. No? It's not. Okay, so I will be talking. So normally, there was a huge arrow over here, okay? Where at the end, what we have to do is to throw away the data, because it's impossible to handle uh, all this information. So normally, the first step is to have a big store where I'm going to store all this data that normally uh, I'm not able to handle it in a, a relational database, okay? So probably you know the, the solution. It's a, a big data cluster that I can use to store all this data, okay? Uh, maybe if I don't, okay. 
is because we cannot see the arrow because it's quite important to see how is the data flow, but I will try to, to explain, okay? So the first step is to store all the data that was not useful, okay? To process all the data, and what is more interesting is to enrich the database that I have here. For example, I can be collecting data from Twitter, which is quite interesting, trendy, want to see what is going on, but maybe a tweet from one year ago is not interesting because it's not uh, 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 combined with uh, my products uh, nowadays, no? So unless you are a politic, the, what you grew out uh, one year ago doesn't matter, no? So, but as I told you, uh, we can enrich the data warehouse with a new data set, and we can go to the next step. So what can I do? I can have a NoSQL database that's going to work as a cache. So we see sometimes, for example, you have a lot of web commerces, for example, or you want to collect the data from uh, Internet of Things, uh, sensors, or e-commerce. So you need a fast layer to work with, so because it's public available, to collect all this information. But uh, big data is slow for this kind of sense, because I cannot run updates, OK? Or the data warehouse is more, as it says, for data warehouses, not for my data marts or for my e-commerce and, and so on. So what we can use is to combine all the different data sources, OK? So uh, ideally, for example, when we work for an uh, EOT perspective, for example, what Oracle is doing is collecting all the sensor information into a NoSQL database, and then we can aggregate, do analytics on a big data platform. And then we can enrich all this information again to our data warehouse which is going to be, the, at the end, the BI people is going to be accessing this data warehouse, okay? So now, more or less, this have a shape. So we have a NoSQL for uh, real time, to store in real time. We have our big data for batch analysis. And we have our database for analytics, uh, for uh, real time reporting, or as to keeping all the important data there, okay? Then, on top of that, in able to collect more data, so as I was talking about IoT, uh, sensors, so normally we have a lot of data sources, okay? So that's why we can put a new component, which is the Kafka component, in order to ingest data directly into the uh, NoSQL database or directly in Hadoop, depending on the, uh, our use case, okay? And as you're not going to see it, but uh, at the end, the last step is to make a flow between all the components, okay? I'm going to give you an example very clear that, for example, is Netflix. How Netflix is using uh, this architecture to, in order to, to uh, recommend movies, okay? So uh, with Netflix, what they're doing, they have a, like a, a, a Kafka where they are sending all the information of what you are watching, where did you click, where did you go, okay? They have all this information, and they are storing in, in real time in a NoSQL database. OK? From that, what they're doing is doing analytics to say, hmm, this person prefer the action movies, or this person prefer other kind of movies, OK? So they are consolidating also this in a data warehouse to have a view of what is going on. But we can go st a step back. Why not enrich our NoSQL database, which is prepared for uh, uh, real time, to have the output of the analytics in the NoSQL? So you have here small tables with the recommendations already built by our big data platform. So for example, when we go and we say, OK, I want to I see that one movie, already here in the NoSQL, you have a, a recommendation from another movie when it was built already in a big data platform. OK? So this is the whole architecture that you can build from scratch. OK? And this is what we recommend for, uh, the, in this case, for the university, uh, skipping the, the NoSQL part because the real time was not uh, 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 necessary in, in this moment, OK? But we wanted to show you how to build an architecture from scratch, OK? As we don't have arrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, like we said, know what they know. If they're inexperienced and you want to show them an architecture, build it up from scratch, like Javi just showed you. If they are more experienced, obviously, you can go more in depth. Second, knowing what influences them. And this is actually a really surprising one, especially uh, the newspapers. Uh, in my previous job, I worked at a company uh, where they did uh, heavy sea uh, lifting and dredging. And we, together with R&D, were working on a project to get 
uh, IoT and big data real-time analysis on the ships, on the vessels, built the business case, had the stakeholders aligned, went to the CEO. The guy was about 70. That was our first mistake. We should have realized that. And two weeks before, there had been something on the news about this 16-year-old guy, boy, hacking into some random server somewhere. And this is what had stuck with the CEO. So we, my manager walked in there, tried to pitch the, the project, and the CEO was like, nope, because if someone hacks my ship, I lose my company. End of story. And for us, it was not even an issue because the ships were already connected to the internet, so we knew all the security was already in place. But we had forgotten to know what influenced him, which was the news in this case. And I think this is very important to remember that if you already know so much uh, about it, you seem to forget what everyone else hears. Um, so th I, I really want to point it out to you. It's really, really important to keep in mind what is in the news. The same with the GDPR coming up now, right? I don't know about you guys, but we get so many questions at Oracle. Well, how, does it, how does it impact us? How can you help us with that? So be aware of what's in the news, what legislations are put in place, but also what a potential competitor of this company is actually doing. Um, companies don't like to be lagging behind, right? So if one company is doing big data, you want to do it too, and you want to do it better, and you want to do it bigger, and you want to cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> the university didn't, but in general they do. Second, uh, third, know what they need to know to make a decision. So they might need to know uh, how much it's going to cost what you're going to deliver to them, because if it doesn't fit in the budget, they can't say yes to you. So it's really important to before you start running and be like, oh, yes, this is going to be it, this is going to be heaven, if they don't have the budget for it, don't, honestly, don't even try, because often they cannot get more budget. Uh, but like I said, GDPR, so legislations that are in place or specific policies. And last, their roadmap and strategies. So often what we see is that companies have a certain vendor preference, uh, either they're Oracle-minded, Microsoft-minded, or AWS-minded when we look at cloud or maybe they don't want to do cloud at all. So if we would have gone in at the university pitching a cloud big data solution and they wanted to be only on premise, we would have no, no use case. So always keep that in mind. And second, uh, last, make or buy. Some companies still believe in making their own full solutions, maybe because it's a super specialized uh, product that they're working on, and others believe in buying first. So make sure that you get that right. So just to summarize, we looked at telling the story when you're pitching the business case, and we now have looked at knowing. And last, it is super important to know the purpose of your pitch. We usually identify two, to inform and to convince, and in this case through a proof of concept. When we look at informing, you just give them the information. It's data-driven, you give them the information, you let them read it, and they have to make their own decision. So that can, for example, be done by showing them white papers, benchmarkings, whatever, you give it to them and let them decide for themselves. However, if we look at showing the value when you're trying to convince them, it's more in the feelings, it's more in the guts. So you really want to know what exactly you need to point out. So you go back to telling the story. We, we saw that their problem was student retention. So we're going to show them in a POC, we're really going to show them, okay, by using our big data tool, we're going to make sure that you get the insights that you need to increase your student retention to increase your student progression. So again, informing is really just impersonal and convincing. You really work together with them in order to hit them where it hurts the most, and you become sort of the savior that they need. So Javi is going to elaborate on the POC that we did at the university. Yeah. So coming back to that beginning of the slide, uh, the presentation, if you remember the the, all, the main thing of this presentation is to know what are the business problems, so the pain, okay? So in this case, the university, the pain that they have is they didn't know what it was going in the university, why the students were leaving, okay? I don't, it's because I have bad teachers, it's because of the crisis, it's because uh, another reason that we don't know why, okay? So uh, at the beginning, so uh, what... Uh, what they had as an initial value is they have a, a retention rate of a 67%, okay? And it was this costing uh, millions to the university, not because a student which goes the first time into the university, I said, oh my God, this is, uh, um, this is the wrong career for me. So this student is not going to be in the second course, third course, and fourth course, and so on, okay? 
So uh, this is at the end, it costs money to the uh, university, okay? So the, the goal for them was to increase, to have a, a happy students, okay? To, to be there to finish the, the career. So they wanted to know what it was going there, okay? So through a POC, so what they discovered is uh, combining data from different data sources that at the beginning was, were not available, is that the people who were working in the campus, as an intern or, some, or something like that, they have a bigger uh, retention rate because they, they can pay their students because uh, studies, because they are more happy there, because they feel part of the community. So there were so many reasons at the beginning was hidden for the university, because at the beginning you cannot think about that, but with big data they realize that uh, the, one of the reasons was the, because the people were working also on the campus. So what they did, so they invest 200K in jobs, okay, to have people working also there, so practicing what they were doing in the university, okay? And this has a huge impact in the university because the, the retention rate increased a lot and they were at the end very happy uh, from a, a student point of view, okay? Thank you. All right, just to summarize uh, what we just discussed. So when we're looking at solving the business problem and pitching your business case, first make sure that you analyze the business problem and tell them the story on how you're gonna fix it and make it measurable and quantifiable. Know your team and know the people in, in their team, so know which, which people they have, know who's gonna help you, know your stakeholders. Customize your pitch accordingly, either to convince them, to inform them, uh, and to point out, again, how you're gonna help them. And lastly, but surely, make sure that you build the solution smartly. Thank you. Thank you very much.